Hello everyone and welcome to SUNY Schenectady. This is an overview of our learning management system Brightspace. That's where you can find all your courses online. So the first thing you want to do is go over here to my SCCC. That's also known as the portal. When you click that button, it will bring up your login information. This is the same username and password that you got. Or it'll just log me right in. Um, for you, it'll first bring up your username and password. It'll be the same username and password that you got when you registered, unless you've changed it. In your portal will be all the things that we send out internally, as well as an events calendar, Office 365, where you have free access for Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. Your email is right here as well, a link to the library, a college scheduler, and then right down here at the bottom, D2L, also known as Brightspace. Once you click into that, it brings you here to your home page. So on your homepage are a couple different things to note. The first and probably most obvious are all of your courses. So you'll be able to see whatever classes you're taking for this semester. They usually have a picture as well as the name of the class. Back up at the top, you can see my smiling face here. For you, before you put a picture in, it'll just be your initials, but you can click on your name and you can go into your profile. There you can put in a picture, set your preferred name, and set your profile settings. In notifications, we have first an ad for the Pulse app. That is an app that I highly recommend using. It has an email address where you can send notifications. You can also register your phone number. Down here, you pick which instant notifications you want to get. The two that I really recommend are these announcements. If a new announcement comes up from your professor, possibly about homework coming up, maybe about something like a missed class or a canceled class, you wanna make sure that you get that announcement. So you can have it sent to you through email, but also your SMS, your cell phone. The other thing on here to note are your grades. You can get a notification when a grade item is released and also when a grade is updated. So if you had a grade and you talked to your professor and you asked, hey, can I resubmit this and try for a better grade and they update it, you can get a notification right away. You can also get notifications about assignments, content items that are created, and quizzes. So you get to choose how much information you want coming from those classes. I'm going to go back to that home page. And now we're going to look at one of our actual classes. To do that, you just click the hyperlink and it'll take you right to your course. Now you're on your course homepage. So to get back to your list of classes, you would click my home. Right here, we're on the course home. The course home has those announcements. You can see this class hasn't started yet, so I don't have any in here. It also has your teacher profile. There is my smiling face. And usually it'll have a picture and then a little bit about your teacher. Also on here is the calendar. So the full calendar of all the upcoming events for this particular course are shown here. I have here is called a visual table of contents. The visual table of contents gives you pictures of each module in your course. Now, I should say that for this particular course, all of the modules through week 16 are fully open up. You may find that you have an instructor who just opens up week one, or maybe they open up weeks one, two, and three, just so that you're not overwhelmed and that you can work on things a little bit at a time and not work quite so far ahead. In the modules, you can have a bar down here. You can see that I've clicked into a few things in each one of these modules. So I have 50% of this module completed. If I click the I, it gives me the full list of what I have 
set for my students to do for that module. And if I hover over this little fast forward button, it shows me the next topic that I have to do. So this is a nice visual way to show you how much of the module you have completed. So you can get to these modules a few different ways. You can click right here on the table of contents, which is what I'm going to do. And that takes you to that particular module. Here we're in week one. There's a picture and a description of what I have my students doing in that module and then all of the stuff for that module. So here you can see we have some readings, they have some videos, and then they have their assignment right at the bottom. The module list is over on the left. So let's say that I actually wanted week five instead of week one. When I click into that, it pretty much looks the same. Picture, description. Here I have a web page and a lecture. I'll show you guys real quick what that looks like. When your instructor posts a lecture, it comes up right here. So you can watch it in Brightspace. For my students, they can also watch it on YouTube. They can click into their watch later if you have a YouTube account, or you can share and um, copy and paste that link into maybe a different window if this one in Brightspace isn't working. Going back into the module, a few other things. Here I have a PDF for my students. When I click on that, Again, it comes up right here in line. So I could read it in here um, or I could download the document and read it on my own, maybe on my phone, on my tablet. You can also have the option to print this out. The other thing that you're going to see in here are assignments. Uh, this is an actual assignment. You can see it says right underneath there. You might also have things like discussion boards or quizzes. So the first place that you can get to those is right here in the module. And I'm going to show you another place that you can access those later. Here we have the instructions. Um, it tells you whether or not you've had any submissions and then you can upload your file. To do that, you click upload. You search your computer, you open, and there we go. This box right here is just for comments to the instructor. So you could ask questions like, did I do the assignment correctly? Or I was concerned about my citations or thank you for this unit, it was very helpful. <laughs> Things of that nature. The comment box is not meant for your full assignment to go into. That you're just going to upload. You can also, if you have a class like music or speech, you might have a recording that you have to upload and then you can upload a, or record video or audio. Now, I'm an instructor, so it won't let me submit, but that is what you would choose. We're going to go back into our module and I will show you guys the rest of the table of contents. So over here in these modules, you can again, they're all on the left. Once you click into one, all the material will be on the right hand side. The table of contents gives you all of the information for all of the modules. You can click into things from here as well. You'll notice these hyperlinks, but I think it's easier to go module by module. The course schedule is kind of like the table of contents, except that it is a little bit briefer. So it shows you what's coming up for today, tomorrow, and for the next seven days. Or you can see the full schedule, which again is exactly like the table of contents. Here it gives you the date and then all the stuff. It also again shows you how much you've completed and how much you have left to complete. And it'll give you a little check mark for each of the things that you have clicked into or completed. So that's a nice, again, visual way to see what you've done. The overview for the course usually has a course description and maybe something about the course materials or the instructor. Some people don't have an overview for their course. They might have it here as a module um, where it says course overview or syllabus and calendar or um, class resources. So just be aware of that. So there are other places that you can find all of your assignments as well. Here in the navigation bar, we've already looked at my home. That's all of your courses. We've looked at the course home. We are now in content, which 
just has all those modules. And then we also have here course tools. In course tools, you can read all of those announcements. Here's what one looks like for one of my other classes. You'll notice that it has, it's loading. <laughs> it has a title for the announcement that I could click on and see again. It has the actual announcement with some links, some pictures, and then a short video from me. My computer's being a little bit slow today, but that would come up as well. So those are some of the things that your instructor might put in the announcements. It might also just be text. Um, Hi everyone, I'm not feeling well today. Class is canceled, here's your homework. Or Hi everyone, here's your homework for this week. Don't forget that we have a test coming up next week. So that's what the announcements look like. Going back to our content page and looking at course tools, we also have assignments. Now the assignments are, as I showed you, in each one of your modules, but you can also look at them here as well. So you can access them right from this assignments page. You can see whether or not you've submitted, you can see your score, and you can see your evaluation status. Those are any notes that your teacher might have showing you your grade or why you got your grade or commenting on the grade that you got. For some people, they will have points. For other people, they might have letters or percentages. So this part might look a little bit different. But the most important thing here is that you can see whether or not you submitted, which I think is really important because sometimes we have computer problems and we can't really tell whether or not our file has gone through. You don't need to call or email your instructor. You can just go right in here and check to see whether or not you submitted that assignment. You could also click in here to submit the assignment if you don't want to go back into the module that you were just in. Another aspect of course tools is this link for discussions. Now the discussions will be in the modules themselves, but you can also see the full list here. The forum will have a name here. I've just named it for my class. And then these are the weekly forums. They're called in Brightspace topics. To submit a discussion, you can click here or in your module. You can read the prompt and then it'll also, your instructor will probably give you your instructions. For most people, you have to start a new thread, that's your individual post, before you can see or comment on the post of others. So you enter a subject, you can type right here in the box. Sorry about that. You can type right here in the box or you can type in Microsoft Word or Google Docs and copy and paste it into the box. Once you're done, you could also add attachments if you need to for this particular class. When you type in here, you can bullet point things, you can number things, you can also add stuff. So if you have a class where you're supposed to find a YouTube video, a picture, or a link, this is the little insert stuff button that you would use to do that. Once you're done, you press post, and once your post is up, you can see the entire forum and comment on other people's posts. Typically in a discussion forum, you have to post once and comment two or three times. But that'll likely be in the instructions from your inst professor. Also in course tools, you can go to quizzes and other things like surveys if your instructor has them. The important thing to note when looking at a quiz or a test is that there are very clear instructions about when things are due, how much time is allowed, and how many attempts are allowed. So those are important things to note before you start the quiz. When you also start, that is when the timer begins. Um, here, it's not gonna let me do it because I'm the instructor, but it's showing me that I have unlimited time, but I only have one attempt allowed. That means that I can only take this quiz or test one time. But my instructor, in this case me, um, I haven't put a time limit on it. For other classes, you might have a time limit. So you might have 60 minutes or 90 minutes, and it might also show you a number of attempts. Some people have two or three, and some people have unlimited. If it's something that your instructor just wants you to know and get right and do the best that you can on, or if it's a practice quiz, you might have unlimited attempts. 
Once you get in there, the quizzes can be set up like a regular test that you've taken before with multiple choice questions, true, false, fill in the blanks, short answer, and sometimes essays. So there's a number of different types of quiz questions. They might come up one at a time or it might come up all at once depending on what settings your instructor has chosen. Lastly in the course tools, but certainly not least, are the link for your grades. That is here or also here in the navigation bar. So again, like the content that we saw before, there are a couple of different places you can access it, which just makes it easier for you um, because it's easier to find. Again at the top, a reminder that you can stay up to date with your grades using the Pulse app. Here is your calculated grade, usually showing as you go. Now this class is a points-based class and then students can see a letter grade, but for many people they might have, again, a percentage, they might just have letters, they might have a combination. You can see all of the items for your course, at least those that your instructor has made visible to you at this point in time and how you did on that particular assignment. So here I have points. If I had completed this, it would show the number of points I received versus the number of points available, and then it would give me my grade. For your assignments, you could also check your grade or the completion status on that assignments page that I showed you previously. But if your instructor is putting your grades into Brightspace, you should have knowledge of what your grade is pretty much all the time, as long as things are graded. So there's also a link to the library, but that pretty much sums up everything. Your grades can be found here or in course tools. Also in course tools, you can go directly to assignments, discussions, quizzes, announcements, and other things that your teacher might have, like surveys, or if you're in a virtual classroom, you can click to go there as well on the dates indicated. On the content tab, this has your course overview, the schedule, the table of contents, and then all of the modules week to week. Or if your instructor has larger units, the larger unit modules will be here. And then within the module, you'll have sub modules for each week or each day that you're meeting. You can also access these modules on the course home where you can again see announcements, your instructor profile, and that digital table of contents, as well as your class calendar, which you can see for the entire <laughs> class, or you can just see for the day that you pick or the week. And then going back to my home, this is where you get into all of your classes. So that's a brief guide to navigating Brightspace. I hope that this was helpful. Thank you.